A new tell-all book from a former higher-up in the Church of Scientology has been released, and it's full of juicy details about the inner workings of the Church, its nefarious activities, and the actions they've taken to cover up things about their members. Among these cover-ups has included the actions taken by the Church over the years to squash rumors that one of their most famous members, John Travolta, has been in the closet for decades. For many years, assorted accusations, rumors, and even lawsuits have come out against the star, alleging him of, at the least, carrying on gay relationships with assorted men, and at worst, committing assault against some of them. But according to author Mike Rinder, not only was he personally responsible for handling the rumors and making them go away for Travolta, but he also personally witnessed Travolta kissing a male masseuse before joining that masseuse in a private bedroom for some intimate time. Join Facts First as we present New John Travolta Allegations Surface from Ex-Scientology Officer. Mike Rinder's Book in his recent tell-all book about the inner workings of Scientology, former high-ranking member Mike Rinder gives juicy details about the religion-slash-cult that sheds light upon its super-secretive operations. And he also sheds light on the open secret of John Travolta's perhaps fluid sexuality. Of course, in today's society, if Travolta were indeed gay, bisexual, or anything else, it wouldn't be a big deal. But in the anti-LGBTQ world of Scientology, it's considered a negative. So Travolta has long tried to keep rumors of his sexual proclivities under the rug. According to Rinder's book, however, he witnessed Travolta kissing a male masseuse. At the time, Rinder was in a hotel suite, having been asked to help Travolta with some PR tasks. He says that while they were chatting, Travolta's masseur entered the room, clad in only a robe. The masseur then reportedly went directly to Travolta and kissed him on the mouth after which Travolta informed the masseur he'd be in to join him in the adjoining bedroom in a minute. Rinder writes that he was shocked by the brazen actions of Travolta and the masseur, considering they knew he was a bigwig in the world of Scientology, and that being gay is not an acceptable thing for the church. Rinder attributes it to the level of trust Travolta must have had in him that he'd keep the secret hidden. Rinder was asked to help cover up Travolta's sexuality. Amazingly enough, the PR issues that Rinder was there to discuss had to do with covering up rumors of Travolta being gay. At that point, the rumors and accusations regarding Travolta's sex life had been going for around a couple of decades. Travolta had long been married to actress Kelly Preston, and they had several kids together. Yet the stories and first-hand accounts of people who claimed to have slept with Travolta were numerous. As early as the 1990s, various male lovers of Travolta's had come forward with their stories or had had their secrets exposed in one way or another. This included people as varied as a porn actor to a fellow pilot. But when the National Enquirer asked Travolta and his reps for quotes regarding an upcoming story they were planning to run about his secret homosexuality, the Church of Scientology decided to be proactive. They began a PR campaign to quell the rumors. This involved not only denying any accusations, but also in going after the sources and bringing lawsuits against media publications who printed these types of rumors about Travolta. According to Rinder, the church was obsessed with not tarnishing the image of the perfect couple that Travolta and Preston had cultivated. He says the higher-ups in the church were also concerned that any confirmed rumors of Travolta's sexuality would cause panic in the church itself, since Travolta is such an important figurehead for them. Rinder also points out that the church officially claims not to be anti-gay, but that they also believe it's something that can be cured. So if Travolta were to suffer from this affliction, it would reflect poorly on their beliefs and practices. Rinder expresses a belief that Travolta would likely have been able to be more open and public about his sexuality over the last few decades were it not for the negative influence of Scientology. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Scientology and its Gay Celebrities Rinder's book yet again confirms what has been public knowledge about the Church of Scientology and its activism when it comes to public relations for celebrity members who are potentially gay. And the church has had a fair amount of success in keeping their members' names out of the lists of confirmed gay celebrities. Despite numerous people who have come out and admitted to having relationships with Travolta, for example, he managed to keep an image in the public of being a strong, heterosexual family man devoted to Kelly Preston. This was in no small part due to the aggressive and litigious nature of the church's PR pushes. According to Rinder's book, he and others were assigned with handling, as the church likes to say, the rumors of homosexuality with its high profile file members. Rinder tells of how a similar path was taken with Tom Cruise when it appeared his marriage to Nicole Kidman was crumbling from a lack of interest on Tom's part. 
According to Rinder, the head of the church, David Miscavige, instructed him to investigate what was happening with Cruz. Rinder says they also hired Anthony Pelicano, a well-known investigator, to tap Nicole's phones and spy on her. A church higher-up, Marty Rathbun, also utilized a strategy on Cruz and Kidman's children that made them distrust their mother. The kids were taught that Nicole was a, quote, suppressive person. After Cruz and Kidman got divorced in 2001, Cruz doubled down on his belief in the church and was more vocal than ever in its defense. Kelly Preston's Take Kelly Preston tragically died of breast cancer in 2020. But before that, she and John Travolta were in a seemingly happy 27-year marriage. But it's hard to imagine she was unaware of Travolta's well-known proclivity for men. After many years of accusations from male acquaintances of John's coming forward in a variety of settings and even accusing him of sexual battery, this was clearly a known issue to Preston. But former members of the church, who have revealed secrets after leaving, have weighed in on the extent to which Kelly truly believed the rumors of her husband's homosexuality. Karen de la Carriere was once a top executive at the church and was even trained personally by founder L. Ron Hubbard. She's known Travolta since 1975 and met Kelly a little later. She described Travolta as, quote, a bad boy who likes risky sexual adventures. But she also points out that Preston was more than likely aware of that. De la Carriere admits that it's possible Kelly was deluded about it, but she claims it was more likely that she simply turned a deaf ear to the rumors. This was made easy easier by the fact that the church preemptively trains its members not to believe things they hear in the media. They are taught to dismiss negative claims against the church or its members before any of those claims come out. That way, when they are made public, the members already don't believe them. According to Della Carriere, Preston, like so many others in the church, was trained to view the media as simply an evil entity trying to destroy her husband and the church. Della Carriere's husband, Jeffrey Augustine, who was also a former member, added to her sentiment. He claimed Travolta Travolta's true passion lies in aviation rather than acting, but that it was Preston's passion for the church that kept both of them involved in it. Plus, added Augustine, it hasn't ever made sense for Travolta to leave the church. This is because not only is he shielded from their more nefarious activities, but also because they provide a constant stream of PR and legal help for him and his family. Plus, Kelly was the true believer, so John's love for his wife meant he didn't question the church. So despite having potential reckless and dark tendencies, Travolta has remained a part of Scientology for decades. Mike Rinder also backed up the claim that Kelly was more of a believer than John, and as such, John and Kelly were subject to the same levels of control as many other members. Rinder pointed out that the church has a strong hold over the lives and decision-making of its members, even the super-famous ones. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think John Travolta has been leading a double life as a closeted gay man? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.